Ramble. Are we in a Ramble or a Fat Ramble down here? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, yeah. Yes, man. Mm. What do you want? Mm. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to another video at Yvonne and Whitney's Kitchen. So today guys, my just done wash. I tired and everything in a one. But the thing is, I don't really feel for any chicken or any of those kind of meat today. So I'm actually going to be making some curry mutton with some rice. Just something simple. I don't know it's set up already. So I'm going to get started and show you guys exactly what I'm doing. And look what we have here so guys. Bless up everyone. So, yep. Yeah, man, so. So, yeah, Cameron just check in unexpectedly. Yeah, just a check in mm. and see what's going on. Because we hear food and cook, so. You know? <laughs> just a check yeah, in. Yeah, guys, I don't know the things said already. As I said, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do in just a few seconds. So, you guys can stay tuned for that. Alright, guys, so first things first, I'm actually going to get started by blending up my seasoning. So, what I actually have here is some onion, scallion garlic some thyme and some scotch bonnet now when i'm making curry guys i like to use a decent amount of the scallion and onions it just adds so much flavor to the curry you guys would not even believe yes mommy ivan yes mother Guys, I'm using four cloves of garlic. As I said, I'm making so mutton. I'm making mutton, so I have to make sure say cook properly. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of you who don't know, onions and garlic and scallion actually helps with rawness in meat. Yeah. So you know, sometimes you go to restaurants and you taste the meat. Like it's fully cooking up, but it still have that raw taste. Like it don't wash good or something happen along the way. A lot of the times it's a case where it was just prepared incorrectly. Ooh. And as I stated before guys, strictly timely is I don't use the sticks of the time. Because literally, people have no idea how bad time sticks can affect you in your food. Mm -hmm. It literally can choke you. Especially so, one. Yep, you have to be very, very careful with that. That's why I always tell people only use the leaves. Or you can do what Mama Ivan does and just put the entire thing in. That's connected. As long as it's connected, you can put the entire thing in. And then you just take it out back when you're ready. But yeah, don't practice putting in the sticks. I've seen it be a case. Even one of my subscribers mentioned it when she came down here. Said, oh, she had a Jamaican husband at one point, And he used to put the sticks in his food. So one point it nearly choked her in a soup. So I had to really make that point clear, guys. I a lot of people see the different tutorials. And most people are putting it in their food like that. But guys... Yeah, if, you, they gonna do. if you even use the, the whole piece, uh, you take it out but don't share it with the food. Because you can make mistakes and put it in the food. Yeah man, I not as I'm saying guys, tailor food to your taste, but certain things are just principle my god. Because why put something in your food that can literally choke you? I don't feel like that should be something that you practice. And I'm going to add in some pimento as well. But yeah guys, like I said, certain things I just feel like it should be the basic things that you should adhere to when you're in the kitchen. 
Because that no. If me I make food, me no want nobody come and tell me say they throw up on this or that in my food. I don't think that's one of the nicest things to hear about your food. So to this we're just gonna add some vinegar. Not too much. We just want enough so that it can blend. We want it to be on the thicker side. So I'm just blending this up now because I really want to just have it for when I'm ready to marinate my meat. I can just pour it on readily. Alright, so I'm just gonna put the cap on my blender. Just gonna put the lid on and get it blended. <laughs> So we got this blended up to perfection. So we're just gonna set it aside until we're actually ready to season up our meat. So I actually have some rice on the stove. I just washed it and put it on. So I'm just going to add in some butter. And some salt. I'm just gonna cover that and allow it to cook. Meanwhile, we're getting our stuff prepped. So, you guys can watch what's going on. Alright, guys, so I'm gonna get started on actually cleaning up my meat now. I have to take a sip of a drink first. Because, as I mentioned, guys, I just finished getting some clothes washed. And doing a bunch of other things as well. So, I have to keep myself hydrated. So I'm up and ready to cook. And I don't know. So the main things that we're doing right now is just cutting off the fat. Like I said, many of the times when you cook, leave on some fat for flavor. But please don't leave on all of the fat. Okay, so your meat should not be covered in tons of fat. I don't know why people keep leaving the majority of the fat on the meat. Well, I like that. I know why. A lot of people said I must save the meat. But really and truly, when you leave that fat on, it's not benefiting you in any way. Sure, fat gives flavor. But if you leave too much of it on, it becomes overpowering. So you'll end up with an incredibly oily dish. So when you look in the gravy, now it's going to be completely oily and it's just gonna have a disgusting texture to it so yeah guys as i said this is what we're gonna do with pretty much all of the meat until we're done as I ha you guys know me i have to make sure the meat is cleaned up properly and I can't eat the meat unless it's cleaned up properly. So some people say I'm picky because I don't eat meat from certain areas. Or I generally just order chicken when I go out. But I know it out of the people spoil chicken when they're cooking it. So that's why I generally go with the chicken. With things like this you have to be careful because certain parts of this, especially the membrane, if they leave it on the meat it can make you feel sick like you're about to vomit after you eat it so I prefer making these myself all right and we have a couple more to go so I'll see you guys when I finish this and it's actually time to season it up so stay tuned okay, so here we have our meat I'm actually just getting it washed so that we can get on with seasoning it I'm just going to add some vinegar into this. And we're just going to clean it up very, very nicely. I have to ensure that it's done properly, guys. Like I said, a lot of the times meat can have a raw taste to it. 
you want to make sure you start the cleaning process from here so when you're actually getting it to cook there is less rawness for you to deal with Actually gonna drain this off and give it a few more washes then we're gonna get on with the seasoning process sure this is drained off properly so we can get into seasoning and I tell you the seasoning the seasoning is going to smell so so fantastic guys let me tell you when you guys season this you're going to want to eat it straight away all right so we're all prepped and ready. Time to get on with the seasoning. So first things first, I'm just gonna get some all purpose on this. Some chicken seasoning. A decent amount of that. And we're gonna get in some of our season to the bone seasoning on this now. So hey guys, personally, I like to use a mixture of seasoning on my meat because it just gives it so much more of a unique flavor than if you were to only use one. As my turn from now, the chicken maggi is the best one that I've tasted so far, but the other ones have different flavor components that taste really good in the food when you mix it with that. So I generally just like to use the mixture of them. All right, so a lot of people don't know about this. I would have mentioned it in my previous videos, but if you're new, you may not know. I do like to add some jerk seasoning to my curry. Because it adds that tinge of spice that's really, really good in it. And then just some black pepper. I'm also going to be using some ginger seasoning as well. Because I didn't get to buy actual ginger, so that's what I'm using. And we're going to be using some of our curry powder to actually let the meat marinate with it. So that flavor can really soak in before it even hits the pot. Now for the final thing guys. Our blended marinade that I mentioned earlier. We're just going to pour this out. Just plop that in there. Also it's your choice if you want to um, actually blend your seasonings or not. I just find that the flavor releases so much easier when you blend it up. So I'm just going to get all of this out of my blender. Alright, so I'm going to get this mixed up. Can you smell it, right? Mm. And guys, don't skimp on the seasoning when you season the meat. I know so many people they want to use less seasoning so they must save my seasoning and this and that but guys 
And you can't leave them in a certain way there. Honestly, if the food no look well good, I can't eat it. So it prefer me look both it good and done. And satisfy myself so we can actually make more money to buy back season. Because if I'm not eating good food, I'm going to feel away. Like That's only if you know you have some people who do that, right? Mm -hmm. So they must see it from the seasoning and the sun mm -hmm. Yeah man, season it to your liking. Because trust me, if you're working and you're not eating good food, you're going to feel even more miserable. And you're not going to really have that incentive and push. To say, yeah, man, we need to work a little more so we can buy what we actually like to eat. So, yep. This is fantastic so far. We're going to cover this up and leave it to marinate. Then we're going to get to cooking. Guys, my tell this smells so good. Like, if you guys could smell this right now through the screen, it's absolutely fantastic. So I will see you guys when it's time to put this into our pot. Alright guys, so it's finally time to get our mutton into the pot. What I'm going to do is actually add some butter to the pot. And a little oil. Don't need too much. I just want to make sure that it's melted down in there. Next, you're just going to add in your curry powder. I'm actually using a mixture, guys. With some better fat and some Indian curry. I call it Indian curry because some Indians make it. <laughs> so you'll hear a lot of Jamaicans say stuff like that. But yeah. So... We're mixing this out, then we're going to add in our mutton. And guys, I'm gonna tell you now, this is going to taste so fantastic. So we start out adding in a few pieces. And as it hits the pot, you can automatically smell that, that curry scent and flavor coming through, guys. Oh my goodness. We're just stirring this up first, then we're going to add in the rest. Mmm. Guys, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. You're just going to let this cook until you see it start to dry down. That's when you're really going to actually add in water and allow it to pressure. Oh yeah, man. Let me even smell that. Mm. I like you can eat raw. Very mm. nice. Guys, I know about a few like type of stuff we are talking about. Because yeah. I'm telling you earlier, from your seasoning, it, you're going to literally have that scent there already. So once that hit the pot now, it's coming like you're not even better one wait. But yeah, that's how we do it. So, I'll catch you guys when I'm checking in on this again. So yeah, we'll just leave it for doing its thing. Guys, so at this stage, it's dried down. So we're going to add in our water now and actually get the lid on and get it to pressure. Mm. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water just to cover it some more. Alright, so that's decent enough, guys. We're just gonna get the lid on. Close it. I'm gonna let that pressure. Many moments later. All right.
right guys so this is finished pressuring so we're just going to add in the rest of the water and some potatoes and we're going to actually get this boiling and cook down nicely so we're just going to stir this up and let it cook down nicely guys when this is done it's going to be one of the most fantastic curry dishes you've ever tasted so i'm gonna catch you guys then when we're actually tasting that time again you know yeah bless up on yourself you run out with this kitchen to play something again and come back up on you know guys i don't actually know so much period but i tell you say the curry mutton and white rice and you run out with this kitchen again wonderful meal guys i tell you say it's nice, 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 nice thing. I don't know. I see my face and taste it, guys. I couldn't believe it. I forget the review on the channel. Guys, it's nice. Stay on down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Wonderful. This guy. Some of the guys right there have eaten some of this, you know. But at time, you know. It's nice, guys. Yeah. I'm going to with me. I prepare one next thing, the guys. I'm going to make sure I get a sample out of it, you know. From berry business. About well, seven berry, seven different berries. She make a shape with it. Uh. Berry blast. We don't know what we mean, but it's a berry blast, shake or a berry, shake blast or whatever guy with my tennis in the case already. <laughs> Almighty. Mm -mm. Right? For me to let me tell you this is a complete meal this to itself. You can feel it guys. Yeah, and a whole pack vitamin, that pack with vitamin. You no know, guys. So you no know, stay tuned now guys, you know, we see that video that when with me prepare. That shake that you know. Yeah. But I call that meat now. So I'm bless up on yourself guys. I will see you on another cooking video and even a witness kitchen. So I'm just stay tuned guys and bless up on yourself. And do the right thing. Like, share and subscribe. Just like that.